Hello, welcome to another episode of the Bible Says This. What say you? Psalms 33 verse 4, the A clause, and it says, for the word of the Lord is right. I'm glad to be talking to you today, and as you can see, I am not alone. I have one of the greatest women of God, in my uh, personal opinion, of our times with me today, the prophetess Barbara Calloway, all the way from Dallas, Texas. This woman of God is anointed. Uh, here at the upper room, we love her. The, the Lord is using her to minister the word of God. She's a preacher who preached with power and authority, and I am honored to have you on this segment, woman of God. Thank you for Honor joining us. Honor is all mine. Thank you for having me today. <laughs> I'm delighted to be here. Now, listen, listen, we, we're going to talk about something today that's going to bless you real good, and I'm going to toss it to this woman of God, and, and, and she's going to bless us because, you know, uh, there is a, we're living in a day where idolatry, which was the number one sin yes. of the Old Testament, yes. idolatry. Yes. Uh, idolatry has made a revival yes. in America. Yes. In America, Christianity is no longer the fastest growing religion. That's right. In fact, in many countries in the world, it's no longer the fastest growing religion. That's right. In many segments, they're saying that we're living in what is called a post-Christian age. Mm -hmm. Islam is exploding. Mm -hmm. uh, Buddhism is exploding. Uh, because of Hollywood, people are buying into this wicked yoga mm -hmm. and things like that. These things are exploding. And yet the Bible said that these things would be, but we're, we are to, to stand our ground and fight the good fight of faith. Yes. It is said that there are over 2,006 different religions in America alone, mm -hmm. even though the God of the Bible said this in Exodus chapter uh, 20 and in verse... Uh, uh, verse 2, he says, I am the Lord thy God, which yes. brought thee out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage, and thou shalt have no other gods before me. The word before there, thou shalt have no other God besides me. Yes. The only God that there is, is the God of the Bible. And all of you, many of you who are watching, you are familiar with the Shema. The Shema of Deuteronomy uh, chapter 6, one of the most important passages of Scripture in all of the Bible. It says in Deuteronomy 6 and 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And I listen, I go along with the Shema. Yes. The God of the Bible is yes. the true and living God. And in talking about this, this leads me to a message mm -hmm. that you preached uh, when you were here. Uh, the last time you, you served with us and God used you mightily. God. The thing that makes this that made this message stand out so to me, and I'm uh, you going to talk about it, mm -hmm. is that it's a message that it takes courage to preach. Mm -hmm. And and uh, in ministry, everybody knows that there's two sides to ministry. Yes. There's the ministry aspect of ministry, mm -hmm. and there's the industry aspect of ministry mm -hmm. there there are those sermons that are commercially viable that everybody that's wants right. That's right. and then there are, there are those sermons that's filled with God's truth that may not sell that's right they may not be as commercially viable because they bring correction yes. and rebuke and nobody today want to be corrected we just want to be told that's that right. everything's going to work out that's right and all this but you preached a message entitled put away your strange gods. Mm. And as you ministered the word here, I, I was, um, I, because I am an apologist, I love to defend the faith, I was moved by the courage that That's you displayed. Tough. A woman of God invited to a church. To my knowledge, you're not a pastor. No. To my knowledge, you don't have a organization underneath you yes. uh, funding, up, funding monies up to you. To my knowledge, no. um, um, I, I was—I I heard a preacher online the other day. He was talking about how he would preach in a place, regardless of what they paid him, regardless of the numbers and all that. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the preacher's not full time. Yeah. The guy who was saying that at the time. Yeah. So I want to hear him say the same thing when That's he becomes right. full time. That's so if right. your income is whatever it is, your secular job, it's easy to be brave. Absolutely. But, <laughs> Absolutely. but when you preach, when you stand and minister the word. 
you stand uh, believing God, depending on the Lord to take care of you. Amen. And yet you went to a place where you knew it would, this is tough, but you went there. Now tell me, uh, she's from Dallas, Texas, uh, a mighty woman of God, preaching the gospel, standing on the word. Talk to the audience about this powerful message and your inspiration and the things that God gave you, Sister Kyle. Well, Bishop, I am just encouraged, first of all, to preach the word of God yes, and the truth of God's word. And as you forestated, in this day and time, mm -hmm. we have become an idolatrous people. Yes, yes. And so many times, especially us as people who go to church and believe in God, mm -hmm. we would say, mm -hmm. we would argue that mm -hmm. because we don't have golden calves right. that we've erected. Right. Right. However, there are things that are hidden in our hearts. Mm. And as you mentioned, the truth of God's word, mm. it's not popular, mm. but it is what sets us free. Mm. And so God began to speak to me, to speak to the people mm. and warn them against idolatry yes, and the different forms, what I would call functional gods, false right, gods. Right, and right. so the Lord began to move upon me to call the people back to a time of reflection mm. and repentance. Mm. And one of the gods that we're operating in, in the body of Christ, it's the God of entitlement. Wow. The God of entitlement. God of entitlement. The God of entitlement. Talk to us about that. The God of entitlement simply says that I am entitled to a certain privilege, to a certain status. Mm. We live in a very narcissistic society mm -hmm. where it's about me and what mm. I want. Mm. And so what we have across the body of Christ is we have people wow. who wow. want to be served, mm. but they're not willing to be servants. They are entitled for positions, they're entitled. And, and we see it all across the body wow. of Christ where this wow. spirit, as a matter of fact, it's one of the major spirits that is uh, in control of some of the movements that we see. Mm -hmm. For the woman who's mm -hmm. getting an abortion, mm -hmm. as you're so passionate yes, about yes, that, yes. that spirit of entitlement mm. says it's my body. It's my body. I can do what I want to do with it. Lord no one mercy. can tell me. And people are feeling like they are entitled mm. for certain things without God's permission, without his blessings. And even we feel like God is, we are entitled for God to do certain things for us. You know, I, you, you, you're so on point. I had a man to tell me, mm -hmm. and I, 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 I was trying to win him to the, to the church, mm -hmm. wanted him to join. I lost him because mm -hmm. he had said to me, concerning the blessings that the Lord has given me, he says, I deserve mine. Yes. And uh, I, I was outraged and, and floored by that yes. because if, if God gave us what we deserve, That's we'd all right. be lost. That's right. I'm glad that yes. the God of the Bible is not fair. Yes. Because if he, if he gave That's us right. fairness, we'd all be lost. That's right. So, so as this spirit of entitlement comes yeah. in yeah. and it's all about me. That's right. And, and, and the Lord being my servant. That's right. One of a few years ago, one of the leading gospel singers, I won't call her name, but uh, her record, you know, and her likeness, her voice, mm -hmm. but I won't call her name. Uh, she says, the song starts out with, da ding, da ding, mm -hmm. it's me, Lord, I'm ringing your bell. Wow. So she likens the God of the Bible yeah. to a dumb waiter. Yes. Yes. If that's not entitlement, what is? Absolutely. And what happens is is that we see these things. And here's the thing about the God, the spirit of entitlement or the God of entitlement. Mm -hmm. It says to us, as you forestated, that God should do certain things for us. Mm -hmm. And this spirit, it is crippling the church. As a matter of fact, it is a contradiction of Jesus Christ himself mm. because he was a servant. Yes. He yes. came to serve. Wow. And so we're using this spirit, this God of entitlement. And also the Lord began to talk to me about the God of power, mm. the mm. God of power mm. that we see where people are using power and abusing it, using it as manipulation and control. And this God of power, it is, again, it is a contradiction to what we believe in the word of God. Now, for, for this segment, we have just a, a few more minutes, but mm -hmm. now before we talk about this power, mm -hmm. I want to, listen, this, is, this, this entitlement thing, mm -hmm. this is big, mm -hmm. this is powerful, and, and I, I praise the Lord that God has given you to share this with the body of Christ. So then 
this entitlement is not the mind of Christ. No, it's not. The Bible says, and uh, what came to my mind was Philippians chapter 2. Yes. Uh, it says, uh, look every man on his own things. That's look right. not every man on, look not every man on his own things, but look every man on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. who? Yes. Being in the form of God. That's that right. is what he was. That's right. Before he came to this earth. That's right. Thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Right. That is, he did not think equality with the Father right. was something that he had to forcibly take. Yes. Thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself That's right. of no reputation. There's no entitlement there. That's right. And took on, made himself of no reputation, took on the form of a servant, That's right. and was made in the likeness. You're talking about a big step down. Yep. In the likeness of men. Yes. Of humans. Yes. You're talking about limitations, going from being God who made everything to being wrapped up and becoming a human. The scripture says, and being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself yes. and became obedient to unto death. Now, you know, death couldn't kill him. Yes. Unless he humbled himself That's and allowed it. And even the death of the cross, wherefore God have highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, uh, every knee uh, should bow mm -hmm. uh, of things in heaven and things on the earth and things underneath the earth. Now, so this entitlement yes. God yes. really ends up holding yes. you down. Absolutely. And you know what? This entitlement, <laughs> it is what got Lucifer God, kicked I'm, out of heaven. You are so because right. he begins to say, I will ascend. Yes. I will become like I, the most I, high God. Yes. That I. And so we have to ask ourselves, how many times mm. are we saying me, mm. mine, oh a day? God. Oh how God. many times are we actually so consumed so with good. what we want? And that got Lucifer kicked out of heaven because yes. Yes. the created wanted to become greater than the creator. Mm. Mm. The created That's being powerful. That's wanted powerful. to become greater, greater than, the creator. than the creator. And that's what's happening in the body of Christ. It is so impossible. It's so possible to become so self-absorbed, this self-approvement, this self-esteem building up mm. that we come so absorbed with self that we erase God out of the picture and we make it about ourselves and not about him. Now, I, I, I just find it in, in sitting here listening to you. First of all, I, I agree wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. And I, I hope the audience is appreciative mm -hmm. that, that there is there is there are people of God mm -hmm. who will stand flat footed and even say the things that, that you're saying because you're clearly swimming upstream right. in making this argument. But what you're saying is God's truth. That's right. When, when you, you mentioned Satan, if you, if you yes. study and you go to Isaiah yes. 14, uh, the question is asked, which right. which which uh, buttresses your point. How art thou fallen from That's heaven, right. O Lucifer, right. son of the morning? And it's right. asked with an exclamation point. Mm -hmm. How art thou cut down? How how didst thou weaken That's the right. nations? Right. Verse thirteen says, "For thou hast said in thine heart, I." I Yes, <laughs> I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of yes. God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation yes. and in the sides of the north. And I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Yes. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shall be brought down to yes. hell yes. in the sides of the pit. And that's Ooh, what this God, God of entitlement mm. does. It brings us down. Brings us down. There's no, no place but destruction oh for those God. who feel oh like God. we can ascend over God. And so mm. this is what idolatry really is. Mm. It is putting things above God or on the side of him. Mm. And as the word of God says, you shall have no other God beside me. Ah. Yeah. Now, my friends, we are going to do another segment of this because I want to talk about this God of power. Yes. This is Prophetess Barbara Calloway. She has joined me. She's an awesome woman of God. And as you can see, she's not afraid to speak God's truth. Uh, and, and that's what I, we appreciate so here Praise at God. the ministry. And we're praying for you Praise that the God. Lord continue to use you in a day like today because the body of Christ needs to hear these 
messages. Now, they're not necessarily feel-good messages. No, no, no. And God knows you can preach and take us to the heights. Uh, but you're, you're declaring yeah. the truth of God, which will set people free. That's right. Now, my friends, join us for the next episode of The Bible Says This. What say you? Ha, <laughs> ha,